This is a mystery cooler. And yes, I have some questions like, what are those? Why is the spacer number three actually the Intel backplate? Why is there a list of components per socket, which isn't the numbering next to the image? Oh, these are steps. One, six, two, three, four, five, seven? Yeah, sure, I'm dyslexic too. And then explain to me where the ARGB plug is for this all black cooler without ARGB. Stupidly written manual aside, this is the ID cooling frozen. Frozen. It's, it's hard not to make dyslexia jokes here. This is the frozen A410DK. It's from ID cooling and we haven't worked with anything from them so far, but it looks promising. We got a direct touch four copper heat pipe cooler sitting on a 38 by 37.8 millimeter base. The cooler is 152 millimeters high until the ARGB less top plate. The heatsink is 50 millimeter thick and 120 millimeter wide, and we got two 2000 RPM quick 120 millimeter fans pushing up to 78.25 CFM at up to 2.68 millimeters of H2O. And mounted in push pull, we got ourselves a pretty compatible and compact cooler with 100% RAM compatibility. Out of the box is also pretty normal. In the regular type of box, we got the necessary installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste, and a cryptic manual. And by the way, the mounting gear is, is packaged kinda cool like little breakable Lego pieces. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to position the backplate behind the motherboard, add these rubber things on top of the outsticking rods, add the black spacers, and then place the retention brackets on top and screw everything down. Over on AMD, we need to remove the original retention brackets and replace them with the red spacers, followed by the retention brackets in an inwards pointing position and screw them down. Then add some thermal paste and screw the cooler down. And no, you don't need to connect any ARGB. This cooler doesn't have any ARGB. I, I'm pretty sure that they just used the same manual for a bunch of coolers. And then some have ARGB and some don't. But uh, yeah, maybe don't do that. And before we talk about the interesting stuff on this cooler, I just want to quickly explain why I think the manual is so stupidly written. These numbers here on the side are steps, with an unnecessary error indicating the movement your hand does at that time, which Anyway, these are out of order, which is already confusing, but the actual parts numbers that you need are down here. So when you get this, you just would go, okay, LGA 1700, I need piece 162 and, and so on, but one is the heatsink, two are the fans, and six is the wrong spacer. No, you need all the parts down here, and then you need to well, figure out which part is used where based on the image. It's, it's just confusing. Remove this and these two, write the component numbers next to the steps, not at the bottom, and voila, way better. Anyway, I think the cooler is interesting, or at least the heat pipes are, because the copper heat pipe part of the direct touch base is kinda big. The A410 got the same 6mm heat pipes as, for example, an Arctic Freezer 36, but if you compare only the touching part of it, it's definitely bigger. On the Freezer, we are somewhat around 5.3mm per pipe, and on the Frozen, it's more like 5.8, 5.9, which is astonishing considering this is a 6mm heat pipe. And overall, this is bigger. Yes, there, there is space in between them, sure, which the freezer doesn't have, but it's definitely bigger. So let's test that. First, we benchmark the Frozen on our Intel 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250, and 320 watts. There, we start with the fan at 100% speed, and then we slowly lower the fan speed and measure the temps and noise to create a noise to performance curve. At 120 watts going through the socket, the ID cooling Frozen A410DK, what a long name, managed to keep the CPU at 30. 4.8 degrees C above ambient, which is a respectable result. It's not far from the Scythe Mugen 6, the Deepcool Assassin 4S, the Scythe Fuma 3, so pretty respectable. Yet the most important comparison, size and type-wise, is still the Freezer 36, which is a degree in front of it. On the bright side, the last generation Freezer 34 eSports Duo is almost a degree and a half into the other direction. So the ID cooling one isn't sitting in a bad spot here. However, the fans. Spinning at 2000 RPM, they are loud. Like, like really, really loud. And sure, many coolers do these kind of jumps on lower workloads. After all, there isn't much to cool. 
but this here is just kind of brutal. But the joke here is, once you turn the fan speed down to below 75%, it's fine. From here on, the ID cooling cooler kept a very good ratio, slightly better than the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, significantly better than the Hyper 212 Remake, and slightly behind the Noctia NH212A or Freezer 36. Like, this is very good, and this is very bad. But what about 250 watts? Unlike the Hyper 212, the Frozen A410 survived 250 watts. At 66.9 degrees C above ambient, it may now be sitting minimally further away from the Freezer 36, but overall it is still somewhat in the same spot. It's just interesting that the Deepcool Assassin 4S now fell behind. The noise is pretty much the same thing. Again, we got a relatively good part and a relatively bad part. On the good one, the cooler performs in between a Freezer 34 and Freezer 36, again, and from there on it just becomes louder and louder and louder without becoming much cooler. So for Intel CPUs, this can actually do 250 watts. You can pair this with a 14700K and be good, but don't forget to set a proper fan curve. Like, if I were to use this cooler up until 90 degrees, that thing would max out at 80%. From there, the curve would just make like a whoop upstairs, but I would avoid this part here as, as long as I can. And for anything below 14600 and then so on, it seems like a solid cooler, somewhat in between a Freezer 34 and Freezer 36. So overall, it's an okay cooler. Performance-wise, it's good for sub 200 watt systems and as long as you are into the design of this RGB list top plate, I don't see any issue if you pair this with a mid-range CPU. But watch out for the noise. The fans can get incredibly loud and for any future iteration I sincerely hope that ID cooling works on the heatsink part of this. A curve like this usually means that the heat is stuck either in the heatsink or the base. It, it's somewhere and the fans can do more, a lot more, they clearly have the potential, so please work on something so that they can actually do something instead of just becoming louder. Price-wise, it's actually fantastic. If you live in the US, because I can't find the dual version here in Europe, but for 35 USD on Amazon.com, that's a great price. That's like Arctic Freezer 36 level of price. But okay, this should be all for ID Cooling and their Frozen A410DK. And at this point, a huge thank you to ID Cooling for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to hire a writer to rewrite this. Nobody should learn deciphering stuff just to install an air cooler. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to keep going, have a look at our take on the Freezer 36. That one was also phenomenal. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.